Hi, and this is Donna Faye Weitzinger, Navajo County Supervisor from District 5. Thank you for joining us at Navajo County Connection. Today we are talking about snow and what happens when the snow hits the ground. Well, we have um, two people from the county who help us um, prepare our roadways because certainly we want to make sure that people are safe. So the biggest thing is um, how do we prepare um, our roads and getting ready for the snow season. What is it you do? Um, but before we do that, um, I certainly should take the time to introduce everyone. And Rick, how long have you been with the county? 16 years. 16 years, and what mm -hmm. do you do? I'm the highway maintenance manager highway. for Navajo County. Thank you. And then we also have Bill. Good afternoon, I'm Bill Bess. I'm the county engineer, and I've been here for 13 years. Awesome. Well, I was telling them before we started, I mean, like, we'll treat it like we're just shooting the breeze. So um, today we were expecting to be outside, so I'm wearing um, my snow stuff. So I know that it's been snowing. Hopefully when you get to see this, that it's still snowing and that we're still thinking about um, um, the people who make sure that our roadways are safe. So the first question, um, what do you do to help prepare um, I know that snow plowing, you know, you didn't think about it the night before. What were some of those things that you do to make sure that you're ready for the upcoming snow season? Well, I, I want to start out that it just didn't happen yesterday. We started months ago in preparing the equipment. Uh, get the, uh, the trucks, uh, the snow plows on the pickup trucks uh, and the 10 wheelers, uh, get the cinder spreaders in the back, get all the equipment checked and uh, winterized and serviced, uh, the plows, the, uh, the blades, the, uh, the, uh, it just mm -hmm. didn't happen yesterday. It's a, it's a long process to get ready. Is there anything you wanna add here? Well, and then just to add on to Bill, lots of training. So yeah. we, you know, not only do, do we do that, but it's, it's unfamiliar to the guys um, with all that additional equipment on it. Mm -hmm. So we have designated routes and have them get in their equipment and drive it before any snow hits the ground. So that way, when it does happen, they're, they're ready and as well prepared as we can, we can get them. And I think that's so important. One of the things that I did mention earlier is, um, you know, what would it be like to drive a route? And I, it would be fun, I was considering, but I don't want to be a hazard. And I think that's so important when we're serving our communities that we want to make sure that we are doing the best job that we can, that we're being conscientious of safety, and not only the safety of those who are on the road, but certainly your drivers um, in being um, cognizant of how to protect them as well. So I think there's a lot of um, certainly things as as people who are driving the roadways. What are some of those things that we can do um, when we're thinking about the upcoming snow season and to help you? Um, don't crowd the plows. You know, that's, that's always, always the big one they're given. Um, we have, you know, signs and markers on the, on the plows to give us plenty of space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a big piece of equipment, doesn't have rear view mirrors, doesn't operate like your standard vehicle. Um, they're hard to see out, they're, they're loud. Um, typically plow drivers have been driving all day too and they're tired so that's just just the main thing is is when you see us coming you know give us give us room give us some space mm -hmm. be patient so, and be, be, patient. be very patient be very patient with us because it, it it's guys are out there for a lot of hours and it takes us a while to to get everything pushed and cleaned up and and get it to where residents can go and enjoy it so when we think about and that's very important that for us as drivers to pay attention and to be patient and be cognizant. So when you're getting prepared, um, the snow is starting, um, how do you develop an idea of what the route is gonna look like? How much time is it gonna take? Um, how many people go out? I'm sure there, there's a lot of factors that come into place. Mm -hmm. So we have, um, we have a um, policy that was adopted by the Board of Supervisors um, and then that's handed to us and then and we put it into to play. And, and, and what it is, is is we have, you know, roads that are ranked from like one, two, and three, and those are priorities. So we have our bus routes and we have our, our collector roads, and those are, are our main routes that we that we start with and, and that we get that's cleared from the snow. And then from there, we'll move, move on to our subdivision roads and our primitive maintained roads. Um, so that's kind of our first step mm -hmm. uh, in, in the process of, of putting the routes together. 
Um, you know, again, it's based off area. Navajo County's big, yeah. so I'm not just snow. We're not just snow plowing from Pine Top to Sholo. We're going Pine Top, Sholo, Heber, Clay Springs, Winslow, Holbrook. So we're spread out. It's it's a lot of area to cover. So we've got to be. We have to break these areas up that are manageable, mm -hmm. and that it's just not one operator out there by himself that he has support from, from uh, a, another team member. Yeah. So I think one of the things, um, we have over 700 miles of roadway um, that we maintain on a good day. Mm -hmm. A good day, sun is out, roads are dry. Mm -hmm. um, so what does that look like on a snow day um, as far as how many miles that we potentially could maintain mm -hmm. if we were to get snow throughout the region? Be all those miles. Mm -hmm. All those miles. All those all miles are responsible miles. for the maintenance, which mm -hmm. would be snow removal, and but it'd be done in the priority from the collectors, uh, subdivisions, and then primitive roads. Okay, so all of those miles. Mm -hmm. When you think of um, the number of hours that would take, the mm -hmm. dedication of the drivers, and certainly you know the amount of hours that the drivers are putting in. So lots for us to consider. So when we're driving along, trying to get to maybe our doctor's appointment, and we might be behind a plow, um, maybe a little frustrated, um, you know, just keeping those things in mind. Um, so when you, one of the, the biggest concerns that I always get are the residential areas. Um, what are some of the things that we should be mindful of the residential areas, and what is it that you do in those areas? Um, regarding the residents, um, don't park on the streets and watch your trash cans, because that can be a, a, a mess if they're too far out in the road. Mm -hmm. they, they really fly. Um, that, that's, that's the first thing. Um, I, 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 guess, I guess the other thing would, I don't know, Bill, help me out on this one. You're doing good. <laughs> well, I kind of got sidetracked <laughs> with, because those things really fly when you hit them. Again, uh, we're trying, <laughs> we're, we're trying to open the roads up so the residents get in, get out. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, our initial pass is to, to get the roads open and we will leave a windrow. Yeah, it's unevitable when you're pushing snow, there's a windrow. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, six inches or it could be 18, two feet, 18 inches, two feet high, mm -hmm. depending on the amount of snow. And we, our job is to clear the road and then we'll come back when everything else is cleared and, and uh, start opening up the driveways. Now we call that our cleanup pass. So after the mm -hmm. storm is gone, then we'll come in and widen everything in case another storm's coming in. So, and that typically looks like you know, the road this and, and widen it out beyond to, to, to the bar, what we call the bar ditches mm -hmm. or the drainage ditches. So we push the snow out that far. And sometimes they'll, they'll go into to driveways that have been, been cleaned yeah. uh, by a private contractor. And so we'll make sure to grab those berms and push them or windrows and push them out of the way. Mm -hmm. So that way they're not causing a, an obstruction. So that's all part of our cleanup process. Yeah. You know, just by listening to the both of you, that there is a lot of thought that goes into being prepared for a snowstorm. Um, how do you manage? How do you prepare your equipment? Uh, making sure that people have the right information, that they're trained um, to be able to not only handle like the the main thoroughfares through our communities, but through uh, the the residential areas. What does that look like? And um, just being mindful of um, public safety, I guess. So there's a lot of elements and I could see that um, trying to manage all of those things and making sure that you have the right amount of people, um, there's a lot that goes into that. And I think that oftentimes as drivers, and this is, you know, I'm coming from the driver perspective, that I'm the layman, that I'm getting out of bed and I'm thinking, okay, you know, I gotta get somewhere. And um, that is your responsibility to make sure that my roads are plowed so that I can get there. And maybe that is not the kindest way to think, you know, that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of background that goes into that. What do you think? I, I think you have to look at it like this. We make sure the road is plowed so emergency services can get to you. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's because, because we're emergency services as well. So we support sheriff's department. We, we support the local fire departments mm -hmm. uh, for their, our districts and uh, ambu you know, on ambulance, uh, any type of emergency services. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the way that we look at it first, that initial pass to, to get the roads so two cars can get through, it, it's really so that emergency services can get to you in case there's an emergency. 
and, and I've actually personally have, have had uh, those situations to where I was in an area plowing and we happened to have somebody that, that needed emergency yes. services and mm -hmm. fire department was able to get with me and myself and another crew member were able to to get the road cleared so that they could get to that individual and that's mm -hmm. that's really for us that's 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 the the the, the, primary, uh, the, the purpose. primary purpose that's correct mm -hmm. yes yeah. um and then and then of course after the snow is gone then it's you know i go in and we try to get the roads open as and wide as soon as possible so mm -hmm. that way residents then can go out and enjoy the snow and and our our um, travelers that that like to come up and and visit the mountain and, and enjoy everything and, and see it we you know we try to be mindful of that as well so and i think one last thing is the coordination effort that it takes for all of the partners who live within our within the region. So we think about townships, we have tribal communities, and we also have ADOT, um, mm -hmm. and everybody is on the roadways to help clear the roadways mm -hmm. in some capacity. And I know that each of those particular entities have their own jurisdiction, but it takes a lot of um, conversations and partnership to make those things work. What does that look like for, for Navajo County? Um. Communication, I believe, um, just you know, letting letting the gentlemen or or the individuals that hold my position in those those other municipalities know that hey, you know, we're we're here to support you, just like like you're there to support us. Mm -hmm. So because it's it's the end of the day, yes, we have our boundaries, and we have our districts, but the end of the day, it's it's about the residents and making sure that again those emergency services can get to them if needed. So. So it's just, you know, just kind of an open door and, and open communication with them mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. partnership. Awesome. The, well, the other thing is no, the snowstorms, they're not always the same. It's a snow, but there's different conditions there. Mm -hmm. And the planning has to be a little bit different. The first snowfalls of the year, usually the pavement's warm and it hits, melts off, slushes, and, and it's easy to move. The storm we had uh, yesterday, the pavement's cold. The, the ice is melting and turns the, the, excuse me, the snow is melting and turns the ice. And then you got to treat that more with cinders so that the, the motorists aren't uh, getting off the edge of the, of the road because it's slick. So it, it just, we just can't go out there each time and this is what we're going to do. You have to be uh, dynamic. It's, it's adjustments of how you, how you attack the storm. Yeah. Yep, and being mindful of all of those things. So I'm grateful that you guys took the time to join me today and talk a little bit about what we as residents should expect um, when you're out on the roadways, um, what is what the effort is to prepare for that, and what we can do as residents to help you. So I think all of those things are positive things. So if you're out on the roadway when it's snowing, make sure that you slow down, make sure that you give um, the plows enough room, and uh, be patient. Um, I think the biggest thing, you know, is being mindful of what Rick brought out, is that, you know, we certainly want to make sure that we provide avenues for public safety personnel to be able to get to the places that they need to get to. Mm -hmm. So thank you, and um, be safe out there, and we'll see you at the next Navajo County Connection. Mm -hmm.